Hey, good day, folks. It's Tourism Tim Warren here with a very important announcement. A special episode of Tourism Marketing TV that could mean the difference between success or failure on your travel business. I want to share why most travel websites are dead on arrival and how to make sure yours isn't one of them. I'm going to give you for free today three of the five secrets that you must have on your travel website to make sure that it sells and it's your number one return on investment. Do not underestimate the value of what I'm about to give you just because it's free. This is the same exact advice that consulting clients have paid me thousands of dollars to help them start, grow, and succeed in their travel business to have the lifestyle and income that they want in their tour business. Plus, this advice that I'm going to share with you could save you thousands of dollars with your webmaster and avoid a website that's dead on arrival. I've got some really important tourism marketing website facts to share with you. Number one, 95% of all travel is researched online. So your website should be your number one best return on investment of all your tourism marketing. Number two, what I call the seven second rule. You have less than seven seconds to let a prospect know that what you do, that you're experienced, and why should they consider doing business with you? And, and, and if you don't grab them in that seven seconds, they're usually gone and forever. Now, I'm going to show you some websites and to show you, to give you some proof so you can see for yourself how quickly the majority of people uh, leave a travel website. So a moment ago, I talked about the seven second rule and why it is critical that you grab a prospect's attention fast. They know what you, what you do, where you go, and, wh and why should they consider you? I mean, all the action is online. So if you're not able to implement some of these basic proven principles that turn a travel website failure into a success, you're not even going to be in the game. So what we're doing is we're looking right now at Google Analytics. Uh, this is a, an incredible tool that, that tracks the users to your website, um, what keywords they used, what pages did they come in on, how long did they stay, and a lot of really, really critical um, data. So what we're looking now for is the, is the dashboard. And this is how you can see it's a, it's a very current um, time frame that I'm looking at. Um, this is a, a travel website here in California. Um, and this is a snapshot. They've had oh, 1,360 visits, um, 2.41 page visits per, per visitor. But this is what I wanted to show you here. 62, almost 63% of everybody who came here bounced. And what that means is, according to, to the actual user statistics, almost 63% left in less than 10 seconds. That's a huge percentage of time to spend on a site and uh, on a site um, and, to, and to lose that business. Also, you'll notice that the average time that those that did spend here was only a minute and 44 seconds. Let's look a little closer at this. Um, here is a snapshot of the bounce rate you can see uh, on a daily basis for the last month. Um, you know, some days it was less, 55.93. Here it is at 78, almost 79% of the people on this particular website left in less than 10 seconds. And you can just look through here and see, oh, here's 83.87%. Here's um, the lowest bounce rate you can, is maybe 44%, but that, as you can see, is kind of unusual. And that's why 62.9.4, <laughs> I can't speak, 62.94% left in less than 10 seconds. This is huge. And this is happening to your website most likely. Um, let's look at another website here. I'm, re I'm hiding uh, which website it is so that um, um, I don't want to embarrass anybody. Um, in fact, on, we're about to look at some websites in detail. I'm going to show you some examples of some bad websites and some ones that, that um, the websites that are dead on arrival and those that are, are, are grabbing prospects are enrolling them and generating leads and sales. But before we go there, let's look at a little bit more bounce rates. Here's another different site. 62.94% bounce rate. Uh, you can see it's it's pretty it's pretty bad. Um, I want to show you um, just so that you have an idea that this is all legitimate. Um, let's see if we can get my computer to work. Um, let's look at 
how much time they're spending on, on this on the site. Um, this particular, this is time on the site, and you can see that the average of this particular site, this is the second site we're looking at, also a travel website, um, is 54 seconds average time. The previous one was about a minute, whatever it was, 40 seconds. This is 54 seconds. And let's just look on, an, on a daily basis. This is the average time on the site for that day. Oh, this is six seconds. These people didn't stay at all. 28 seconds. Oh, here they had a good day on October 5th, 2 minutes, 24 seconds. But just look how pathetic these numbers are, 17 seconds, 8 seconds. And this website, frankly, is not terrible. But this is the sad truth about website visitors. They are so overwhelmed with choices, and they're looking for very specific things. And what they want to know is, what's in it for me? Everybody who's looking for something online is always searching for what's in it for me. So you better be quick on giving them the, the key elements that they're looking for in knowledge and comfort that they, they possibly may have found the solution to what they're looking for, especially when it comes to tra booking travel. Um, and so let's look at another site just so that you don't think that I'm just looking at any old site that's got bad st statistics. Let's look at one of my own sites, and I'm going to reveal some stuff here. I think my site's pretty good, and I do a pretty good job at, at creating lots of content, as you guys have seen. Uh, see right here, Travel Business Success, Google Analytics, V-Report, TravelBusinessSuccess.com. I do a lot of uh, effort to um, generate traffic and to drive people there myself, and, and uh, you know, occasionally put out some pretty good uh, videos, since, since, which is what you guys are telling me. Um, I kind of like them. I do them. Um, so let's take a look at this. In the month of the last month, you see it's very current. I've had 2,068 visits, 3,000, a little over 3,000 page views, 1.47 page visits per visitor, a bounce rate of 58, almost 59%. Um, that's not great, but you know what? That's, that's uh, better than average. I said the, the average bounce rate for most sites is in the 70% plus range. So I feel pretty good about that. And to, at 2 minutes, 38 seconds average time on site, that feels pretty good. Um, uh, so I feel pretty strong about those statistics. Now, um, so why am I showing you all of this? Is to I want to you get be very very clear that you have to compel and enroll people super fast and tell them what you do, that you're experienced, and why they should choose you, or they're gone. I mean, how many, just look, do a search in your keyword phrases on for your website uh, that you want to be indexed for, and how many uh, hundreds of thousands of relevant web pages are there? Usually, it's hundreds of thousands, if not millions. So we're going to take a break, and we're going to, then we're gonna, what we're going to go do is we're going to look at some websites um, that do not pass the seven-second uh, test. In fact, I'm going to ask you to look at these sites, and you, if you could tell me in the less than seven seconds what it is that they do. Okay, so stand by. I'll come right back. So before we look at these, uh, do this little uh, seven-second rule to see if you can tell me what, what this, these travel websites are all about, I want to give you tip number one of the three that I'm going to share that are critical to make sure that your travel website is not dead on arrival. It's something I coined about 15 years ago, and I call it the defining credibility statement. And what this means is it's a, it's a strategy and a tool, a, 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 I might say a tourism marketing communication template that you can apply to not only your website, but to everything that tells, that answers that seven second rule. It gives you the ability to communicate in less than seven seconds where, what you do, where you do it often, and it gives them an inkling of why should they consider you as a viable choice to give you their dollars for a trip. So that's what the defining credibility statement is all about. And this is based on looking at literally thousands of travel websites over the last almost 19 years. Well, not quite 19 years because I was involved before the Internet. But since the Internet began, um, I was right there and watching this and studying what caused one travel consumer to get off their fannies and call and email a client versus choose another company. You know, and because it all happens so fast on the website, you have to be very, very quick. 
And you know, this applies to really all your advertising. So we're going to look at some samples here. Um, and you, I want you to tell me real quick, what, what is the, this, these travel websites, what, what do they do? So here, here's the very first one. Did you get that? This was, this was actually a, a relatively uh, high-ranked site, uh, which was shocking. Did you get it? You miss it? Okay. Let's, that, this site, in case you missed it, it says uh, Spanish Tours, Spanish Touring. Um, okay. Take a look at this. Let, let's look at this next site here. Well, remember, you got seven seconds. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, 1,000, six, 1,000, seven, 1,000. Do you, is it really clear what these guys do? Um, are you, are you, can you, are you have no doubt? I didn't. What I found is I got very, very confused when I looked at this. There was so much going on in this site. I mean, there's all this stuff over here, all these different countries. You've got pictures of India. Um, I did a search for Indian tour operator and came up with this site. And um, yes, that's what they end up doing. But boy, I sure wouldn't have known it uh, in that second se seven seconds. Let's, let's look at something totally, totally different. Okay. Look close. Can you see it? Do you know what these guys do? Do you know where they go? What kind of trips are they offering? Done. It's, it's, it's seven seconds. Did you get it? Now, you have to, you know, it, I, most people are very visual when they scan a site. They usually go top to bottom, left to right, and down. That's because that's how most English speaking people learn to, to read, top to bottom, left to right. And they scan. There's been all kinds of studies done on this that they're going to go from image to image to image and they're looking for something that quickly tells them what's this thing all about. This happens to be a, a river guiding company in Alaska. Did you know that this was Alaska right away? I didn't, although that's what I had searched for. Um, uh, I realize that up here in the page title, it says Talkeetna, Alaska, um, but some people don't even have this feature um, activated on the browser and you can't even see this. Um, and a lot of people aren't even looking up there, frankly. They're looking down here. Let's look at another one. Quickly, look at what the, the site's all about. Do you know what they do and where they go? Okay, it's Sombrero Ranches. Well, what are you doing on this ranch? Well. Maybe horseback riding? I, I don't know, but if you look at the very first copy they have on this website, it's all about Groupon customers. That doesn't tell me anything about uh, what this company does, or more importantly, why I should go with them. All it tells me is, is um, uh, I, I, they did, did something with Groupon, and as a travel professional, I, I suspect they had a problem uh, with their Groupon <laughs> offer. Let's move on. Uh, here, here's a good one. Okay. Clearly, it's the real SF tour, but what what kind of real SF tour? What 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 are they do, doing? Is this driving, walking, bungee jumping? Are we on segways? Um, is is this? Um, you, you just don't know. I, I have no idea what 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 they do, and it's just just not clear to me. Um, and that that is the entire homepage, folks, right there. You're looking at it. Um, let's look at this one. How about that one for an index page? Um, okay, San Francisco. It, Silver Lion Service, private tours. What kind of private tours? You know, if I found this, seen this, done that, now what? Yeah, that, that's how people look at websites. What? I don't understand. I'm gone. Let's look at some other sites having to do with the other key aspect of the, th of the three things that, I, that you must have in your travel website, and it's all about credibility. Besides them quickly knowing what you do or maybe where you do it, Maybe even more important is, why should I consider you? It's more importantly, what's in it for me? How am I going to trust that you're a good choice, that you're experienced, you, that my safety and, and security will be a top concern, that you know what you're doing? These are the things that people are considering. When you um, are considering a new restaurant or perhaps seeing a movie or how about buying a car, excuse me, what influences you? Do you, do you look for recommendations um, from friends? Do, uh, don't you read reviews uh, about the movies? I um, mean, these days, it's all about reviews sites online, whether it's a restaurant, 
um, uh, with Yelp or some of the other social media sites. Um, you could be looking at um, consumer reports on a car. I mean, you may find a car that looks pretty sexy, but if it's got a really crappy rating in consumer reports and it's and it's given a really low rating, might you reconsider that uh, that purchase? How about a doctor? You just you know you just don't just go to a doctor unless it's an emergency without probably checking with some friends. It's the same thing with a travel and someone's making a travel pur um, purchase. So let's go look at some sites and you tell me um, um, how comfortable you feel would, about traveling with this company. Is, is that credibility and experience communicated in seconds? And don't worry, after we look at the, the sites that are dead on arrival, I'm going to show you some sites that um, have done a much better job at communicating uh, the defining credibility statement. So, you know, and uh, to help you, give you some ideas and some tips that you can apply to your website so that you're not struggling all the time, too. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. And now what we're looking for is the credibility aspect of a tour. And by the way, I apologize in advance. If the site that we're looking at and reviewing as a site that's dead on arrival is yours. But the good news is, is that um, you're going to be getting some tips uh, in a moment. And I hope that you can see that with some simple changes, you can transform a site that was totally struggling, not generating any business with some simple changes tap into the psychological buying triggers of today's travel consumers so that they get what you do and why they should consider you and they get this information in seven seconds or less. So let's go look at some sites. So here we are. You've had more than seven seconds to look at the site. One thing they did well is it's really clear what they do. It's Grand Trails Nepal Trekking and Tours. Okay, so look at this site, scanning it, scanning it, scanning it. Um, is there anything on there that tell that makes you feel comfortable? I'm going to make this screen a little bit bigger here because um, the, the the text a little bit bigger so you can see it even even more so. I didn't see anything. Uh, let's move on to another one. Here we are. This is um, opanorama.co.om. Uh, I see something about Oman here, but let's just look at this. Visit into Oman. Okay, well, we're, we're pretty clear this is Oman, and they do have hotels, tours, scuba, a little bit more idea what they do, but do you see anything that talks about their experience, their credibility? Uh, I don't see anything here, and this is their home page. Let's look at another one. American Safari Ranch. Uh, it's a pretty site, um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, clear what they do. They did a good job at that. Colorado's best horseback riding. Okay, fine. Says who? Anybody can claim that. But these days, you, um, you want to have proof. And the best proof is to get your best client selling for you. Um, a lot of people can make a lot of statements. But, you know, I want to see the proof. Uh, if I'm going to lay down some money, I want to see what's going on. So I'm scanning, I'm scanning, you know, it looks pretty. I'm, I'm kind of getting clear on what they do. And it, it's, it's South Park, Colorado. Um, and uh, so, you know, lots of little pictures. And, uh, oh, there's a YouTube video. There's something about Facebook down here to join it. But once again, nothing having to do with credibility. And this what I'm showing you with both the previous sites having to do with lack of clarity on what they do and this group of websites that has to do with, with lack of clarity and why they're experienced and their credible choice is so typical. Uh, this is, this is this, a website that's dead on arrival. And, and unfortunately, so many people spent tons of money, thousands of dollars to get these beautiful websites. I mean, this is a pretty, a pretty website and, and I consider it a brochure website. It doesn't, it is not tapping in to the psychological buying triggers of today's travel consumer. Let's look at another one. Okay, here we are in uh, uh, Pepito's Tours, Private Tours of Barcelona. Okay, Pepito, you did a good job on, I know what it is you do. Okay, you're a good-looking guy. There you are. You're, that, that's a nice thing to have your, your picture there. So I know who Pepito is. Um, I don't really see anything here. I, you know, I just now noticed under testimonials and pricings. But remember, if you got seven seconds and you're scanning down through this, and you're looking there, you're looking there, you're looking um, this, um, 
you know, and you, and you start to read it, am I, are you going to even see this? I don't know. I doubt it. So let's, let's take a look at some websites that may not be the prettiest sites. And, fr and frankly, some of them didn't spend hardly any money with, on them whatsoever. But based on results, and that's all that matters. Not my opinion, not the opinion of the, the operators, but based on results of actual clients making e email inquiries, calling them on the phone, and making a booking, giving them a credit card. That's the test that every one of us should be looking at. And so let's take a look at some websites that, that, are, that are utilizing some of these, these uh, top psychological tr triggers, these three of the five um, tips that make a travel website that sells. I'll be right back. Now we're going to take a look at some of the travel websites that do sell and have been proven to yield uh, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales uh, to these clients. And we're going to look at, um, not only when we look at these websites, are we going to look at elements that have to do with clarity and what they do, but also uh, uh, that have elements having to do with um, the defining cr the credibility statement of things, something that convinces me very quickly that you know what, you, what you're going to do. We'll also look at two other components having to do with, with credibility and that has to, uh, and what I call social proof. Social proof is third party endorsements of that you do what you do. It, you, you do what you say you, you do or you do what you represent on your website. And that takes in the form of testimonials and that takes in the form of the new tourism um, social media. Uh, we're going to look at some of those and how they're critical uh, for your success and some, um, some, some examples of how, how they do it well and how certain other sites do it poorly. So since you've seen um, interviews over the last three or four weeks with uh, various uh, tourism clients uh, and people who have uh, what I call the travel websites of sales superstars um, based on their actual sales, um, let's take a look at this. So this is Laura... Uh, Laura's uh, site with Beyond Touring, Laura Howard, and um, you know I'll be the first to admit this is not the prettiest site in, in the world. You know, and, and the neat thing about websites, uh, whether you're Laura or myself, is that they can always be a work in improvement, um, and you can always make little changes because little changes on your credibility statement, your little changes on your look, little credit, uh, little changes on getting testimonials, they all collectively add up to big results in someone, made the difference between them staying on your site and leaving, the difference between them emailing you or losing that prospect forever. So let's look at some elements on Laura's site. Clearly, upper left-hand corner, beyond touring, um, at your Belize trip, um, and it's right here, it says, in Belize, since 1996, safe, secure, close to home. Now, it's really clear that they, she's been at this for a while and safety and security is, is, a, is a top concern and they do it to police. I, I like that and I like its position. Frankly, I, I think, Laura, she, you, this needs to be bigger. I think your credibility statement and, and what you do is not clear enough. Also, you've got a lot of stuff on the top of your website here that, that I think detract from this. You've got two different um, email newsletter signups here on the top of the page. No, but I don't want to, I, I can very easily get into critiquing websites and offering suggestions. Um, and I'm going to do that for you later. I'm going to be doing that in some great detail and show you some other sites and give you some tools. But I just want to give you an overview so that you've got a really good idea of these, these, these three things that I'm talking about um, that you can start looking at your website to see is it dead on arrival or what do I need to do to make sure that yours isn't one of them? So let's take a look at that. Let's look at some credibility factors here. Um, uh, hers come in the form of testimonials on the left-hand sidebar. I, I had to go down a little bit here, but this is a credibility feature in Belize since 1996. It, it, it solved the, the question, do I know how long you've been in business? Um, uh, and it did in less than seven seconds. So that's really good. It just needs to be bigger. Uh, down here on the left-hand side, we've got a testimonial. We've got a picture of a, of a happy uh, family. We've got a testimonial. Another picture of happy family, testimonial. Pictures could be bigger. 
Um, down here, and this is something I wanted to show you. Um, this is an audio testimonial. Testimonials rock and um, are awesome for um, showing credibility. Let me just play this from, this is, says Mary C. New Mexico, here recent, here review of her recent trip to Belize. Let's click. Hi, this is Mary Chapel, and I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. We took our two kids, John and Mark, to Belize for spring break this year. It was a fantastic vacation. I think the best vacation that we've ever had, especially with kids. Um, as a family, we did everything from... I'm not going to get into all the details of it, but I just wanted to show you um, uh, that is a simple little tool that you can add to your site um, to give to get audio testimonials. It's really easy to get people to call in for you. Um, let's look at some other um, sites that I think have got uh, seven seconds social proof and what they do. Okay, go. It's pretty clear what they do. They are mountain training school and um, if you're, I probably went over here and you might have seen this, Patagonia, you may have seen this, Patagonia. So it's pretty clear that they travel, do mountain training in Patagonia. Did you see this right here? 50 years combined expertise providing incredible expeditions. So that's a lot of experience. That's a lot of credibility. And if you're going to go mountaineering, you're going to risk your life. Wouldn't you like to do it with someone that's got a, a lot of experience or a team of people that have got combined experience? That's what the, uh, a, what's the defining credibility statement's all about. It's a brilliant example. It's simple. It's clean. You can read it clearly. It's in the upper left-hand corner. Let's look down here. Oh, what's this? Another testimonial. Right at the very top of the page. You can see this in the first screenshot here. I was blown away by this. Is, here's another audio testimonial. Yeah, the trek. Trek. In the year 2000. 2000. Let's, uh, let me see, let me back it up here. Hi, uh, my name is Scoob. I'm, uh, I'm from the United Kingdom. And uh, I was with Ben and Jaya on their Patagonia trek in the new year of 2007. Uh, I must say that I was, I was blown away not only by their teaching methods, but uh, their whole outlook of expedition life and, uh, and what it means to be beyond. I'm not gonna, we're not going to listen to all of that. I do encourage all of you to go and take a look at these sites. But this is, I interviewed Ben um, uh, a couple few weeks ago, had him uh, on the show. And uh, we talked about how his business was struggling and um, how he implemented some of the, the my guidance and tips, as, and which is what I'm giving you right now. Um, and made some simple changes to his site. Now, for some reason, there's this great picture that's, uh, that usually shows up here that rotates that also has elements of credibility and define what, defines what it is they do. It's not showing up, um, and Ben and Jaya need to fix that. Um, so let's go take a look at another uh, site here. I also recently had on... Um, boy, I'm losing it here. Uh, sea Kayak Adventures, and... Um, uh, and, and interviewed her, and her name will come to me in a moment. Um, and but take a look at this site. Okay, that's about seven seconds. Is it, is it pretty clear what they do? Look at this: Sea Kayak Adventures, leading sea kayaking and whale watching vacations since 1993. This is a brilliant example of a defining credibility statement. It tells me what they do where they do it, and how long they've been doing it. And the where was achieved in these great um, flash images here on the screen where it tells the names of the thing, of the, of the, of the trips. And then down here, they've got Canada, Baja, Alaska, Galapagos, Explorer. Um, this, this is huge. This is huge. So it passes the seven-second test. And there's a lot more credibility stuff down here. I'm going to come back to you and show you. Um, in, a, in a moment here. Um, I'm just looking at my notes. Let's look at them right now. We're on this site. I want to show you some other elements that gave me that seven second credibility aspect. And um, this site was one of the ones that won the, um, the Travel Websites of Sales Superstar Award that I talked about. And um, so it's, um, it's Nancy Mertz Prichard. I'm embarrassed. Sorry, Nancy. Uh, I just, I was losing it. I couldn't remember your name at that exact moment.
Okay, I'm back. Let's take a look at some other issue, um, elements of the defining credibility statement and how they communicate it in that seven seconds. If you scroll down, they, um, they've they got the uh, best adventure travel company. Here's a National Geographic Adventure magazine. Um, you know, whether they won the award or not, maybe they even had just had an article. And they, but they've got, that's what I call a credibility icon. Uh, right here on the upper, on the top here, they've got a, uh, what's this? Hey, my name is William Lee. Um, I want to give a video testimony out to Sea Kayak Adventures Group. Uh, on August 20th, 27th, 2011, I embarked on a trip that I organized uh, with, tech, with nine of my, my close buddies and stuff. And we went up to the northern... Um so that is that site. Let me see if I can get out of here without closing it down. Um, but they've got a testimonial right on, on this page. And they've got another testimonial here. Look, another testimonial here. And every time you refresh this page, a different testimonial comes up. This is brilliant. It's simple. It's clean. It, it just emotes experience, credibility. It's a professional looking site. Um, but the key thing is, hey, I know what you do. I feel comfortable enough that I want to call you and I, I want to email you, and I want, if I'm interested in kayaking, um, I've got some sense that you're a pretty good choice. Let's look at another company here. Seven second rule. We're looking for what it is they do, and why should I consider them? Are they experienced? Do I know that, that, that they may be a good choice? I bet you saw it. Look at this. For right Path Adventures, okay, that's the company's name. Did you, did you see this? It says Satisfaction Guarantee Dolomite Walking Tour. How about over 1,000 satisfied clients since 1983? Do you think that they're pretty experienced at what they do? Um, uh, they've got, you know, the most breathtaking Dolomite views. You know, here's Gary Scott, the, the owner of this company. Um, this is a great site. This is his second website that he created because his first one, Right Path Adventures, was kind of generic and um, wasn't clear enough uh, to communicate what he did on his new tours that he was going to be starting. He's highly, highly experienced a, a guide, um, but he was getting into a different uh, niche of travel. And I interviewed him recently, and I'll release that video later on, but fascinating story. But this site is clean, it's clear, and you know, it's funny, his webmaster gave him a lot of pushback on, on adding this to the site and even this satisfaction guarantee. That was his idea, um, but it's been so powerful. Um, and I didn't even have to go down below the first screenshot to see that this, wow, these guys really know what they're doing. Um, uh, so let's, I'm going to just, we're just doing a quick overview um, here. So um, in a couple of days, I'm going to release an interview that I did with a guy named J.J. Foury, uh, who has a company called Magic Day Adventures. Um, you're looking at his website now. Uh, this is an amazing story of a real Real life uh, tourism business dream where he had been a tour guide for 15 plus years, really knew his stuff, um, but was really tired of working for someone else. And, you know, his schedule wasn't his own. And he wanted, he dreamed of having his own business. Uh, he lived in Barcelona. It's got 15 million guests a, a season. And he thought, I know Barcelona. Um, I'm really experienced guide. Um, I've got a better idea of how I can make my tours uh, happen so he put up his website because uh, he knew he needed one but he and he's not a tech guy like most of us and he put it up and he put up some flyers and he was before the season and he's he, and he hired he spends quite a bit of money with a webmaster uh, to make it right make sure it get indexed in the search engines and and in a in a nutshell um, everything went wrong. He wasn't getting any business he wasn't getting any inquiries uh, nothing was happening on his website his website and frankly his business was dead on arrival this is not that site. This is the original site that he had, but with some a little some minor changes that he made from after just um, reading my original ebook, um, uh, made all the difference on the defining credibility statement, and you know where what he did, and some key things that you can't see that are behind the scenes that helped him get indexed properly in the search engines. So let's look at his defining credibility statement. Did you see it? Left hand corner, up top of the page guided over 1,000 satisfied guests since 2007 in Barcelona. Boom. Crystal clear. You know, just like, hey, he, he did not start last week, and he's hoping for his first claim. Um, look at this. Um, he's got pictures of happy guests. Hmm. What's this? TripAdvisor. Hmm. 
I, you know, a lot of people are really using TripAdvisor. It is becoming a very, very, very strong tool for uh, trip bookings. Uh, look at this. Number six out of 126 tours in Barcelona. And look, there's even recent reviews here. And you can click on it and go right to, um, to the listing for Magic Day Adventures. Just this fact alone that he's got, he's, he's confident enough in his tours to put it on TripAdvisor and let the general public make comments about him says an enormous amount about his credibility, his confidence, that he's running great trips. And, you know, look at this. Five stars is the best you can get. And that's what he has is five stars. 31 people have, have said that for him. So it's clearly uh, he's doing outrageous trips or he's bribing them a lot of money. So, uh, but I know that's not the case. Uh, well, what's this down here? Expedia. Gee, I've heard of them. Um, you know, I mean, he's on Magic Day Adventures on Expedia. This is all really brand new stuff. And you've got to hear the interview that I do with JJ. Uh, it's coming out in a couple days. And he goes into great detail about his dream travel business and how he, he put it all out there. And, you know, he's, he's an expert guy, but he didn't know squat about tourism marketing or especially websites and the Internet. He shares some, some pretty sad um story about his initial struggles and and how it was hurting and um, the changes he made, what was his secret weapon, and then what happened to his business. And 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 what you know and in a nutshell, things turned around. I mean he went from certain failure, um, almost out of money, to having you know a top rating and trip advisor, having Expedia contact him, and so much more. You got you gotta watch this interview. Uh, it's really profound. Um, and it speaks to the dream that I know that you have because I was a lot like you. You know, this is my brother and I when we started uh, his Baja tour business back in 1989 and I started helping him out. Uh, we had a lot of passion. We had a dream to do what we loved. You know, Baja, adventure, surfing. Um, and we started the business and, you know, we struggled. We, 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 we hurt. Especially when we got into the whole eco-tourism adventure travel world. Well, I went into squat about this and that's how I started my quest of to learn why certain travel business were, were succeeding and others were failing and what was the difference and especially then when the websites came on really what converted a travel consumer to a travel buyer let's speaking of my brother let's take a look at his site real quick um, uh, let's so we're going the seven second rule so Two things here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Actually, I'm gonna refresh this page. I need to to change my toolbar here. Uh, let's see here. There we go. I need to uh, refresh this page because I want you to see something here in this very first image. Look here, Rose. Look what this says. Very first picture. It says 1989. Thousands of happy guests. We're talking six words. Six words communicates instantly. Hey. We know what we're doing. We've got lots of happy guests, and we've been at it for a long, long time. And it's it's you know it's clearly he's he's in Baja, Baja Mexico, um, and down here it talks more about sea kayak in Baja. Um, uh, he's got uh, lots of testimonials on this site, but just I was mostly looking at this and the the credibility he has over here and down here uh, we've got some videos. We all finished that one little chip. Oh my God, look at this. This is insane. This is insane. Oh my God, this is insane. Is, is that a bored client or a happy client? Is that person enthusiastic? And this, all this was is capturing, I, I guess, excited comments. Uh, not even comments, what their experience was when they were seeing a pod of maybe 500 dolphins in the Sea of Cortez. You know, we're in a life-enhancing business. And when you can show people these transformative, these uh, and, and new experiences, the emotions that it brings up uh, are so powerful. And when you can capture those, whether it's live on the spot, in videos, or in audios, or in pictures, or later on through reviews, audio testimonials, video testimonials. That is the social proof that we're looking for. And that is so key and to turn a travel shopper into a travel buyer. This is so 
they seem so simple, but yet it's so powerful to to turn someone who's just visiting a website and they're looking for something, um, and you know, are they going to stay or are they going to leave? And you now know that it happens in seven seconds or less. You've seen the data, and those those are some pretty good sites. Most websites, as far as the bounce rate, it's much worse. It's much worse. People, the average length of time on a site could be 30 seconds. The bounce rate could be 70, 80 percent. And and you know, and so if you don't have, if you don't know what your your statistics are of your visitors, you might want to put on a, a some sort of analytic tool like Google Analytics, or there's several of out there that are free that will prove to you um, uh, what's what's happening when your web visitors are coming. So I want to take a pause again and go to the last element of of uh, a website that sells, how to turn it into a average from an average brochure website that's dead on arrival to a website that grabs people, compels people, and not necessarily the website, but what are the other pathways that people are coming into your website, or how else are they researching that travel? And so we're going to look at some social media sites that are huge gateways for travel, and it's only going to become stronger and stronger. And if you're not starting to tap into the, the whole social media world uh, and with review sites like TripAdvisor and Yelp and Google Places, you're not even going to be in the game. Even if you've got a website that's doing okay now, you've got to be looking at, at integrating this into your website because this is a huge new channel where people know that, hey, the reviews that are happening on these sites, these are authentic and real for the most part, not all of them, but they, the, the trust that's being established there um, is huge and it, and it helps the consumer know that when they find your site, and they see some and read some of these reviews, they can start feeling more confident about um, their purchases. And what you'll find is, is that when those people do call you um, from whether they came right from your website or they came through TripAdvisor and you had some nice rankings, they are much more closer to giving you a booking and giving you their credit card than someone who is not. And, and I've seen this time and time again, is that that, that sales curve from shopper to buyer goes from this or maybe non-existent to this. And it, ha it can happen really fast. Or people are actually making bookings straight online. I mean, Laura Howard, did you see what she said about three weeks ago? Is that people are booking from her website, the Beyond Touring, right on her website on multi-thousand dollar trips, just on what the comfort level they had based on her website. This is huge. Think how much time that saves you. Think how much more money that makes you when people feel that much more confident to move to a purchase fast. They just want to know what dates are available and, you know, here's, you know, Visa or MasterCard. So let's move on and let's take a look at some other key elements here. Okay, we, we've, we've looked at um, part, step number one about the defining credibility statement and having clarity in what you do fast. We've looked at number two, which was really about creating the social proof on your website specifically with testimonials, photographs, video, audio, print testimonials, pictures of, of people, um, and how they contribute to your social proof. Now let's look at outside sources of social proof through tra uh, travel, social media, and social media reviews. Now we're, we're back to uh, JJ's uh, website. And um, we've already looked at some of his credibility features. Let's, let's look at the, how he uses TripAdvisor. One of the things that's brilliantly powerful about this is and that most people make a terrible mistake on, even those that have got really high rating, is they, they put this TripAdvisor widget, which is free. TripAdvisor, by the way, if you're not using it, it's free. You can, they give you all these great little widgets and tools just like this one that you can put on your website and other different kinds that to show your ranking, number of reviews, recent reviews, um, that you're a, you've won uh, awards. It's all free. Don't bury that in your site. Put it up on the very top of the, near the top of the page so when someone comes to your website for the very first time, they instantly see that, wow, TripAdvisor. Oh, look at this. Wow, five-star rating, number six out of 126. I mean, they're not number one, but look, they've got a five-star rating. Just the fact that it's there, it's just, it just has enormous 
uh, credibility for them. And also Expedia, being listed in Expedia is another huge gateway. JJ share with me, and you've got to watch this in, the, in this interview coming up in a couple days here. It's just an awesome case study on how a tour operator can really go from near failure and struggle, draw struggle to making some changes on their website and now having Expedia calling him. Um, and he said he was kind of pissed off at him because he tried for over a year to get into Expedia and they just, they just shunned him. But when he got into TripAdvisor and started getting such a high rating, and he shares one of his secrets on how he did that, um, which is brilliant. you got to watch this and see and learn this. Expedia Stark was contacting him. But let's, that's another story. But, hey, it's on his site. It's another huge gateway. And it shows that his, on, on Expedia, it shows his ranking there. Let's look at another site having to do with gateway. Um, this is uh, Doreen Toller. Maybe some of you have seen her um, in, in some other interviews. They have Alaska Tour Guides. They also have uh, Toller's Timbers, which is a um, kind of a, a um, it's a bed and breakfast. It's a lodge hotel. And uh, down here, they've got TripAdvisor, three different TripAdvisor ratings. Now, granted, it's not on the top first page, but oh, look, there is a credibility statement, Quality Alaska Lodging since 1985. Standing out there, it's really clear. Toller Timbles, guest chalets and cottages in Alaska. It's pretty clear what they do, so you don't have to go down very far at all. Now this and and uh, this is a site I'm pretty sure Doreen did herself. She has three different TripAdvisor widgets. Here she's got 12 reviews. She's got four and a half stars. She is the number one of five specialty lodging in Wasilla, Alaska, which is just outside of Anchorage. And it has recent reviews. Look, oh, you could even write a review if you happen to, to um, have been with her. Um, look, here's another little widget. Recommended on TripAdvisor, Toller Timbers. This would take you to the, the, to the TripAdvisor site and you could read those reviews. Oh, look, here's another one. Uh, TripAdvisor, Toller Timbers, write a review. View. Um, so she is giving her guests, not, well, first, he's, she's giving prospective guests lots of social proof that she is, I mean, she's number one rated for, for lodging in Wasilla, which is a very uh, popular tourism destination between Anchorage and um, Mount McKinley. All, and, and so what she's told me that since adding the TripAdvisor widgets to her site, once again, free, She's had a huge bump in traffic, and it helps um, keep her, her bookings going uh, all year round. So it's been awesome for her. Let's look at another um, uh, site. Now, now, what I did here is I went right to TripAdvisor. And what I did is I did a search, just like um, someone might be searching for your tours if you were uh, providing tours in San Francisco. Uh, I went under tours, and I, I typed in San Francisco tours, and it's things to do in San Francisco. There's 120 tours. In San Francisco, so this is this is where getting your clients selling for you, and this is where social proof is the is the future of tourism marketing, and, and literally getting your clients selling for you. One of the first things it showed me is, hey, what your friends say about attractions in around San Francisco. These uh, happen to be all Chris Avant and and uh, Jennifer Lavini are all. Facebook friends of mine, and this is what they had to say and ratings they gave about um, um, things in and around San Francisco, and they even with links to those places. Um, and then here's more friends' advice for our places in and around San Francisco. So here, here is there's 120 things here, and here's the very first uh, company, number one rated, has 102 reviews five stars, and then there's a little bit of copy about them. It talks about what type of attraction they are, their tour, and the distance from from um, city center. And then there's some, some uh, links to some actual reviews here. Um, so this is... Um, this is a very powerful way for someone to be kind of, they're searching through, they're going to, going to look through what are the types of tours are there here, and they're going to look, and they're going to see the number of re reviews, and they're going to look at the ratings. Um, you could have a very high rating and not necessarily have tons of reviews. It's so that it's a qualitative uh, review based on the how many uh, stars or circles uh, they get. You can get five, and how many reviews that you've had. So let's look at, um, I did, a, I was really curious here to see the streets of San Francisco. Wow, they're the number one rated tour 
company in all of San Francisco, which also has ten, tens of millions of visitors every year. So that ranking and using that as social proof, not only here, but in all their marketing could be huge. I thought, well, let's see how well they're using this. So I went over to their, their um, here's their actual listing in uh, streets of San Francisco. Um, uh, when, when I dug deeper to see, well, what did they have to say? Um, let me read some of the reviews. This is pretty cool. Um, and um, uh, so I thought, okay, well, that's pretty cool. It looks like a pretty good company. So I thought, well, let's let's actually go look at the website because let's go back here real quick. I don't know if you noticed it. You have on your TripAdvisor listing, you have a link, one-way link pointed at your website from an authority site, so that helps with the ranking, and a link um, for email. There's phone number. There's even some uh, information about the uh, fees and this and that. So I thought, let's go over to the website. And let's see how they're using this super powerful social proof on their website. Here it is, SF, SO, SOSF, Streets of San Francisco Bike Tours. And I thought, okay, well, it's pretty clear they're bike tours at San Francisco, so that's cool. And I thought, okay, so I'm on the home page and I'm looking, I'm looking, okay, I'm going below the first screenshot. And here it says Certificate of Excellence, May 2011. TripAdvisor. And I thought, that's pretty cool. Um, but I happen to know that b there's all these different widgets they could have. If I were them, I'd be also be using that they're the number one rated tour operator in all of San Francisco. And it would say number one out of 126 right on it. And it could be as, as small as this one is here. I showed you an example um, that JJ has with uh, Magic Day Adventures in Barcelona. Uh, there's also a quote right here from Tim Ferriss, who's author of the uh, Four Hour Work Week, and what he had to say about this tour. Um, but I, and I thought, okay, it's pretty simple, and but clearly they're using this in their website. And you know, yes, it could be better, but hey, that's the cool thing about websites is that you can always make changes, you can always make improvements, um, and you should be doing this. You must be integrating. The, the big three that I talked about. Now, granted, there are some other critical things that make a difference on whether your website is dead on arrival or is a contender. Is it going to turn a travel shopper into a prospect? Is it going to turn that prospect into a call or an email? You've got to start applying these big three that I show you. There's some others that I, I want to show you. So um, I, I've been talking a long time. You can see I have a lot of passion for this, and I've done some um, a lot, a lot of homework. I've literally looked at thousands of websites over since the internet began. Travel is all I do, and I'm and because it is now proven that about 95% of all travel is researched online. Your website better be your number one investment that and. And if a, a well-done website that has these elements that converts shoppers into buyers, whether you spend $1,000 or $10,000 on your website, that doesn't matter. What matters is, is what's your return on investment? You know, if you spend $5,000 to create a great website and it generates you $50,000 a year in new business, would you do that? How about if you spent $1,000 and, and it gave you $10,000? Would, would, you, would you make that investment? I would. Um, I'm on my way up to um, British Columbia tomorrow. And um, I was called by the Canadian Tourism College. And they were looking at their sales and marketing curriculum and realizing that they need something more up to date. They needed something that reflected how tourism is, tourism is marketed and how people are buying it in today's market. They needed to know to do something on technology and they saw my original ebook and they called me up and they said, Tim, we, we'd like to talk. We see that you've got some material here. Uh, that's good. So I'm going up to uh, Vancouver tomorrow and I'll be up there for a week and uh, we're going to talk about their program and how what we can do to help improve uh, this for them. Uh, they're interested in some of my new course material and um, but what's interesting is I know that for their program, um, I believe it's $10,000 a season. I'm going to get the details, but uh, it's, it's a big investment um, to teach you how to be a tourism professional. Um, so, and uh, so I'm really curious to see what they have to offer and uh, how they're preparing to, uh, today's tourism students to be tomorrow's tourism leaders. Um, but I know at the end of the day, it's 
our clients that are the ultimate um, vote that we need, our clients that will give us money that allow us to, to pursue our dream business, to do what we love without uh, proper marketing, without proper sales, none of that's going to happen. And it all is happening online. So why not make the smart and wise investment in your knowledge and uh, in your website to make sure that it sells? So here's what I want you to do next. At the bottom of this page, at the very bottom there, there's a thing there that says um, uh, post your, your comments or share, share, share your tips or something like that. I can't even remember what it says. But I want you to put in there, what is your number one travel or hospitality website question? What, what, is, your, what is holding you back? What's your problem? Um, I got a lot of comments from you guys before and they were excellent. Um, many of them I've responded back to. In fact, I've got, if I haven't responded back to you, I'm sorry. Between email and between the blog posting, I've gotten so many, I may not be able to get back to everyone. Um, but there's some great stuff there. Um, and there's some good tips too. So what you got to do is go to the very bottom of, of the website and make your comments on, on what your number one travel website question is. And number two, in two days, I want you to watch the case study with JJ Faree with Magic Day Adventures. I want you to hear, listen, to his story and see how much it's like yours. I've been at this so long and I've heard from so many, so many tourism professionals and the story is very much the same. You know, we get into this business because we have a passion for travel. We want to be self-employed. We, we, we like being in service to others. Uh, we're tired of working for other people. And that's JJ's story. That's my story. And I bet that's your story. But I want you to hear what he had to say, and more specifically, I want you to see how he went from struggle to success. How did he go from near failure to being having Expedia contact him to be listed in his business? Now, it's such an in-depth interview, and, and, and you know me, I get a little carried away, and uh, I broke it into two parts. So look for part one uh, in a couple days, and immediately a couple days after that, I'm going to give you the other half because this is really important information and it totally follows what I just shared with you today. So I really hope uh, that you'll take this to heart. I want you to know that this is, this, is, this is information that I've shared for free that others have paid thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to get from me in consulting. But the important thing is, is, these, is that investment has paid off. These people get to not only start and grow their business, but to, to have that life that they've always dreamed of, to do what they want, to get paid to do what they love. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for taking notes. Thanks for looking at these websites. And more importantly, thanks for taking action and starting to look at your website to see what elements in your website may be contributing to it being dead on arrival. And start thinking about um, what you can do to change that. And I'm going to be sharing some more specifics on how you can do that. I've given you a lot of the what, but I'm going to give you more how later on. So look for that over the next two weeks. Thanks so much. Tourism Tim signing off. Take care.